the big <coughs> score report, but you know how you can just be upset when you feel like your whole world's falling apart on you. Mm -hmm. And so just pray that God will show her that, you know, he has a reason for this and that he's with her. Um, pray for my work, too. I'm, I got craziness. I'm managing the subway and running six at the same time. So just pray God will send some good people and help me relieve me from stress or off of me. So anybody else have her? Um, pray for Jeff. He was going home from the movie film for 30 minutes and had to rush back to work. The elevator's down. Possible fire department compliance issue. I'm not sure how long that's going to take. Okay. So you can stay in prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, my breathing's been messed up for a while. It's been giving me more and more trouble. Okay. Found out that the uh, test results came back. Everything was benign, but there are some concerns that they want to talk to her about. And we just want that to go away. Okay, definitely, God knows. So um, I'll go ahead and lead in prayer, and then we'll go into worship. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus, God, for all that you have done for us and all the things that you have already provided for us. And you know that we have many needs tonight, God, but you can do all things. Things, Lord God, you are the one that can answer prayers. You can part the sea, you can calm the seas, Lord God. You are the one that can do all things. And I just pray, God, as we begin to cry out for our needs, Lord God, you would begin to answer them and show us who you are, God. I pray for this little boy that passed away, God's family, that you would put the peace and angels and comfort them, God, and lead them in your direction and let them know that you are with them and that you are for them and that you love them. I pray for Sister Sparky as she goes into these health issues, God, that you will completely heal her from head to toe, God, and that you will show these doctors and all the evidence that's going on that you are the great I am. And I pray, God, even in the midst of these storms, God, you would be with her. God, I pray for my work. I pray for my sister Rachel's work, Lord God, that you would just send people, God, good people that are hungry and ready to do your will and work and provide for us, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus, for Brother Jeff. I just pray, God, that you would give him less stress and you would help him, God, to know that you're with him tonight as he's working and providing for his family. And in everything else, Lord, you know. Whatever I didn't mention, you know the need. You know the things that need to be answered. And I pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's just worship the Lord on this Wednesday evening.
we, even when we question our faith in Him, He never questions His faith in us. He is with us, and He never will leave us nor forsake us. He loves us. Tonight we're going to learn about faith brings its own umbrella. Um, Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Prayer was made for Peter when he was in prison. And because of their prayer and their faith, he, the, he was led out of prison. Tonight we're going to learn about how our faith can be open up doors and bring us out of prison walls. You know, we're not literally in prison. But just release us some from some battles we're dealing with. So everybody can be seated tonight, and um, I just thank the praise team and for their de dedication and the songs that they picked. Because I exalt thee is one of my favorite songs. How how much more of a praise can you give than that? You know. I exalt thee. I lift my hands to thee. Amen. He is the great God. So, I would say, uh, well, let me go ahead and read the next scripture. Actually, I'm going to pray because I'm going to tell you I, I've been insanely busy today. And uh, when I was studying this before I came, I'm just like, Lord, you're going to have to help me. My mind is just in a thousand places, and I know that you can do it through me. So let me just pray. Um, Lord God, I just pray, God, that your word would be spoken, God, and that you would help me, God, to be used for your kingdom, God, that you would be the one that speaks through me and uses me. God, let every person hear what you have to say and open their ears and their hearts to receive your word and plant the seed within their heart, Lord, and then let it grow and nourish into what you want it to be, God. I pray, God, that you would just help us all today to focus upon you and your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And uh, so the scripture is Acts 12, 14 through 16. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate, for gladness. I mean, she knew it was Peter, but she didn't let Peter in. She was just so glad to hear his voice. So she was just so joyful and she just ran away. I'm like, how exciting would that be? I'm like, come on, lady, let me in. You know? why, why are you running away? I know you're excited, but, you know, let me in. But let me start over. And she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. What? It is his angel? Come on. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. So she was so excited that she, it, it, she's just, I mean, come on, she's arguing with these people. It is him. Why didn't she just turn around and open the door? Why don't you think she just went around? She was trying to convince these people, look, our prayers are answered. He is at the door. And what happened? They only believed when they seen that he was at the door. See, seeing is believing. But didn't, but didn't Jesus say that, that there's going to be a generation that doesn't see him and still believes? Because of him, because what? Because of the faith. That knowing that Jesus Christ is, is Lord. And so you don't always have to see to believe that, that something's real. So, Joshua Olmsted, in his, in his November 2009 um, Pentecostal Herod article, it says, what is faith? And he told a story of three farmers. Three farmers that met every day to pray for rain that they had waited for. 
Lord for, for years. And they would meet and they would just pray and they would draw and they'd fall to their knees and they would just pray, God, send abundant rain. But still, the rain never came and they remained, and the heavens remained silent and the farmers became discouraged. And one day, a stranger walked up to the farmers and he said, what are you doing? And they said, well, we're praying for rain. And the stranger shook his head in disagreement. And they said, well, we have to have rain or we can't feed our family. We can't feed ourselves. The farms won't produce. And the stranger told them that their efforts were like going. It was just pointless. It would never work. And then another farmer said, well, well what should we do then? And the stranger, you are wasting your time praying and falling on your knees. You're just wasting your time. And the third farmer said, what would you do? And he replied, do you really want to know what I would do? And the farmer answered, yeah, of course, we want to know. Since you know, every, you know, like he's being smart, smart alecky to him, like, of course. I would have brought an umbrella because he already had faith to know that God was going to bring the rain. I'm not saying we shouldn't pray, but we also, when we're praying, should have the faith to know that God's going to bring the rain. Prayer is good, but do you have faith to back up that prayer? Because because even um, Jesus, when he uh, I'm just throwing, I'm just, this is my words, but uh, one guy said, will you heal, heal me? And he said, well, do you believe, like, that I can do it? See, healing's not just believing, or just wanting it, it's believing that it's possible. You're taking faith into action, and you're saying, I don't see it right now, but I know that it will happen Amen. through faith. Yes. So, now, I said now, is faith believing, uh, faith is believing even before you see it happening. So the story of the three farmers reminds me of the story of even in the Bible. And obviously we read the scripture in Acts 12 about Peter. And the story goes, you know, King Herod, he's, He's persecuting the church. He wants to take these Christians down. And he sees that by killing James, John's brother, that that makes the Jews really happy. So that makes him even more zealous to want to take down even more people. So he's like, okay, well, we're going to arrest Peter. And see, he doesn't just arrest Peter. He has four teams of four soldiers guard Peter. So, four times four is what? Sixteen. So, sixteen soldiers are guarding Peter. And then on top of it, he has them handcuff Peter to two of them, and they have to sleep together in the bed. And to me, right now, I'm already like, Peter's already convinced that he knows God's going to take care of him because he's sound asleep between the guards. He's like, I mean, the scripture it says that night, even... Though the shackles, uh, the, he was shackled to two soldiers, one on either side. Peter slept like a baby. He slept like a baby. Mm -hmm. So he already, he already knew, like, hey, if, if God doesn't save me here, I know where I'm going. I have faith. I know everything's going to be okay. Amen. Amen. So, I mean, to me, do I have faith like that? That's, when my world is swirling, everything's going wrong. There's those days like, but God, I don't know if you can do this. I don't know if you can help me through this situation. I question myself. I question God. I mean, I think that God understands that because he understands our humanity. But Peter was so full of faith. He was like, well, if I die, I die. And if I know what I know, I'm just going to sleep. You know? So now, by this point, he, here I was like, okay, well, after the Passover's over, I'm going to take care 
of Peter, I'm going to kill him and we're just going to get him over with. Well, instead, you know what happens? An angel comes in the middle of the night, loosens his, loosens his um, handcuffs, I should say, but it's not called that back then, and says, hey, wake up. Like, the angel had to wake him up. Could you imagine he woke up by an angel? <laughs> that would be awesome. But, but, like, imagine he's woke up by an angel, and the angel has to tell him, come on, get up. Like, we got to go. Like, and the angel throws open the cell and, and like, pretty much carries Peter out past the, the gates. And finally, when they get past the gates, Peter's like, I'm not dreaming. This is real. Like, oh my gosh. Like, really? Like, he's already, like, how do you not know this is real? You've already had so many things happen in your life that shows that God, that God has done this before. Come on. But he's like, oh, it's, a, it's not a dream. It's really happening. So what happens? He runs to his, his friend's house. He runs to his house. And he's like, I got to tell them what the Lord has done for me. See, what your faith in what God can do can change someone else's whole life. That's right. Because what happened, he didn't run and sit in a cave and say, well, me, I was in prison. I got to go hide because they might put me back in prison. But he said, wait a minute. I got to go tell my friends what the Lord has done for me. Amen. And so he goes and he's knocking on the door. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name right, but her name is, I want to say Rhonda, but it's not Rhonda. Rhoda? Rhoda? Rhoda, right? Rhoda is at the door, and she's like, it sounds like Peter. Oh, it is Peter. And she's excited, and she's, but she forgets to let him in. And we already kind of talked about this. And she's, she's like, wow, we've been praying all night, guys, and Peter's at the door. And you know what? They're like, yeah, right. See, how many times can you be in prayer and expect a miracle? And then when the miracle comes, you can say, oh, yeah, I'm right. That, that wasn't God. <laughs> that was no way. I was praying for it, but I didn't expect it to happen. Come on. And, I mean, they were all like that. You must, you must be going crazy is what they told her. You must have seen his angel. What? His angel? Come on. What are they trying to say? They don't have faith that God could have freed them. So, but she did. She's like, he did it. She did. And finally she convinced them to go to the door and open the door. And they're like, yeah. And so Peter goes in there and he's like, let me tell you what the Lord did for me. He loosed the chains. He, he pretty much carried me out of the place. And I, and I mean, he was just telling the whole story. His faith had, his faith had grown so much. Because he knew that the Lord had done that for him. I mean, he already had, we already know he already had faith because he was sound asleep. In the bed. But imagine how much more his faith grew. So, Peter um, was just, he was just excited. He was just ready to tell everybody about it. And um, I'm sure. When he brought sin for him and wanted to, like, execute him, he was pretty disappointed to find him not in the cell. I wonder, I almost wonder, would that make him question a little bit of God? I mean, our enemies attack us, and when we, and when we can't be taken down, do you not think they don't see that our God is real? You know? And I, I would say that he was like, wait a minute, almost like, almost like in the Old Testament when um, Joseph was going through all of his trials and he was put in second command because the king of Egypt or the ruler of Egypt knew that his God was real. And same thing with Daniel. Daniel, when he was in the lion's den, and, and I can't remember the king's name, but he ran and he's like, Daniel, are you okay? And, and he knew that God's... Daniel's God was real because the faith that Daniel had and prayer that he had and relationship he had. 
So don't tell me when we are going through our trials and our issues that our faith can't cause other people's faith to grow. That's right. Yes. Um, and sometimes I think, I'm, I don't know why I keep going on this, it must be God, but sometimes I think God, uh, sometimes I think God lets us go through these times where we do hit rock bottom so people around us see it. Because if they just see a perfect person all the time, they're going to say, what? There's no way. But they need to see a real person. But a real person that trusts in God. Because there's a difference in a real person that has no God that they serve and a real person that has a God they serve. And when they hit rock bottom, they still find a way to see and love their God. Well, how can she love her God after she's went through this and this and this? Why? Because I have faith to know that God can see me through it. And then you can be a witness and a testimony to them. Um, the scripture, Hebrew 11, 1. This is in LT version. Faith is the evidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. I like this version because it says, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. Where the other version is, the New King James Version is, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So it's, it's kind of breaking it down a little bit more. It's, it's letting us know when we have faith, we have confidence that we know that it, that hope, that it's actually going to happen. We know. So let's go um, first or second Corinthians five and seven. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Um, <clears throat> Luke 137. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Um, let's go to First Corinthians chapter two, nine through ten. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches things, yes, the deep things of God. I like that. The Spirit searches things. And it doesn't just stop there, but the deep things. That's awesome. Because that means that God doesn't just see my, my, my little things. He sees the deepest things. And He can help me to walk through them. It's, and there's a saying, the deep calleth to the deep. I believe that God sometimes wants us to be desperate and broken. Because in that desperate and broken time, that's when we're the deepest. And he can come to us and help us and bring us up. And our faith can grow so much more. So, another story in the Bible is Elijah and Ahab about faith. See, Elijah, well, we all know Elijah and Ahab didn't really care for each other very much. But I love, sorry, but I love that somehow Ahab still listened to him. I don't like you, but I don't listen to you. I'm like, I'm married to Jezebel who believes in false gods, and I usually worship false gods. But, but since she told me that God's going to send rain, I'm going to believe you. So it's fine, you know. <laughs> what? Why wouldn't you just live for God then? You know? I mean, it, there's, that's what, it kind of goes and shows you these people that say, well, I believe in God. Yeah, I believe in God, but uh, I don't believe I have to change or I don't believe I have to live like a pleasing life to him. Amen. And then, but then once they hear something, you know, oh, okay, I'll, li I'll listen to you. And they only do it for a temporary time. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yep. But they still go back to the old ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was Ahab all the way. He's like, yeah, I know God. I know Jehovah is real. I know he's, he's the real God. 
but I really like living this way, so I'm going to stay this way. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that's why it's so hard to reach people these days, too. It's because the world has, like, taught, the society has put that falseness on them. That, oh, you just live this way, and you believe in God, and you're fine. But we all know the truth that you, that God expects change. He doesn't expect us to stay the same. I mean, that's the whole point of being a Christian. But what, is, what does Christian mean? It means to be Christ-like. So it means that every day, are we perfect? No, but every day we are trying to perfect ourselves to be more and more like Christ. Amen. So anyways, back on Elijah and Ahab. Elijah said to Ahab, up on your feet. Eat and drink and celebrate. I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe this is when he sent fire down from um, heaven. And he told Ahab, like, get up, come on, eat, drink, celebrate. Because rain is on the way. I hear it coming. Wait a minute. If you read the scripture, how does Elijah hear rain is coming when he's not even up on the mountain where he sees if the rain's coming? Do you get what I'm saying? He had faith enough to know, hey, God has told me rain's going to come, and I hear his word, and so you get up now. Let's go. And see, his faith is what made Ahab get up. Ahab did, just as Elijah told him. And as Ahab was doing that, Elijah climbed the top of Mount Carmel. And he, he just didn't, like, pray this, like, hey, God, send me some, send me some rain, please. No, he bowed deeply in prayer. He was firm in it. He was in it to get the answer. He, 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 he knew God said, I'm going to bring rain. Because he just told him, like, I hear it's coming. So he didn't just say, but God, you told me you bring the rain. So bring the rain. No, he prayed hard for it. And he put his face between his knees. And then he said to his servant, hey, God, go look out over the mountain and tell me if you see anything. And of course, he's servant came back and he said, no, I don't see nothing. And he keeps looking. And then um, finally, I think my paper is out of sorts. Sorry, guys.
when the time comes, all this faith that I put in that God is real and he's going to answer, it's going to come to pass. And what's going to happen? I, I'm not anymore going to be miserable and hurt. I'm going to be like, Lord, you did it. I'm going to be like, um, Rhoda, Rhoda, Rhoda. Sorry. Um, I'm going to run in excitement. I'm going to leap and I'm going to scream. I'm going to be so excited. I'm going to maybe even forget to talk. Lord, thank you, you know, because that's pretty much just, I'm so excited. I can't just <laughs> not let him in. I just don't want to let him in right now. <laughs> so, I mean, our faith is the things, is the most important thing about walking with God. I would say it's the most important thing because even to live, even to even start living for God, you have to have faith. As small as mustard seed says, uh, just to even move a mountain. But he can. But we all have faith. Because how can you have faith but believe in God? You can't see him. You can't touch him. So in order to be a Christian, you have to have faith. So one time a man took his son to a zoo and he was super excited. He was like, Hey, we're, look at the elephants over there. He took him to the exhibit, and you know, kind of like the science center. You go to the science center, and like one area is like dinosaurs, and one area is like robots. And, and so he took him in there, and he had elephants and giraffes, and there was frogs and all kinds of other animals. And his dad's like, look at the look at the big elephants, look at the giraffes. And the boy was just so focused on the frogs. He's like, Daddy, frogs, frogs. And his dad just kept going on. Come on, look at the big elephants. But the son just couldn't keep his eyes off the frog. I mean, the little boy was so focused on something so small, he missed the big thing that was way over there. Isn't that sometimes like what we do? Amen. God wants to show us the elephants and the giraffes and the mighty things of him. The great things of him. Maybe even show us a bigger calling in our ministry or in our lives. But we're so worried about these little things. Well, you know, I didn't get the I didn't get the colored truck I wanted, or I didn't get to go to I didn't get to go to Six Flags and or I didn't have the money to buy what I want. And God's saying, hey, there's a bigger picture. I got yep. bigger things for you. Amen. Is your face so small that you just see these small little things? I mean, even I think he said that to the disciples. You know, when they were out in the ocean and the, the storms were coming. And he said, be of little faith. Do you not know who's in this boat with you right now? Amen. When you're in your trial, do you not know who's in that trial with you right now? I mean, I like how Pastor taught on Job, or someone taught on Job, maybe it was Pastor, but he said, I look in front and he's nowhere there. Look behind him. He's not there. And I look to the right. He's not there. And I look here. And he's not there. But still he had faith to know. But God is with me. You know, those are my words. You know, Job used other words. But he knew. God's never going to forsake me. He's never going to leave me. Even when I don't feel your presence. Even when I can't see you or hear you. You are with me. It's is your face so small to think that God would send a storm, but he can't help you out of it? Um, true Bible faith, this is in the Bible of Expedition Commentaries. And it says, true Bible faith is confident obedience to God's word in spite of our circumstances and our and the consequences. It's, so it's saying it doesn't matter what's going on, it doesn't matter what's happening. 
I'm confident that in God's word, whatever circumstance, whatever trial, whatever problem, whatever condition, he is with me. He's faithful. So, so what's some ways, like, let me ask you guys, what's some ways to build your faith? Go ahead. Um, I like, at the beginning, the story you said, you mentioned with the farmers, that the one guy said, well, what would you have done? And the other one said, well, I would have brought an umbrella. Yeah. Because the Bible says that faith without works is dead. Yeah. So anytime that we're in a situation where we really need something from God, if we can just do a little something to add an action step, Add an action step to that faith that'll help our faith to grow and it'll also show God that we're serious. Mm-hmm. So like for me, I I for many years dealt with a chronic pain condition mm-hmm. and I was on medications for it and it caused insomnia and uh, all kinds of other issues that were with this chronic pain condition. And I, when I decided that I was kind of, that I needed to get healed, it was because I was actually about to run out of that medicine and I was losing my insurance. I had this much of my pills left. And I was like, okay, God, when I run out of these pills, you have to heal me. Right. And every day as I took those pills, I anointed those pills with oil. And I said, okay, God, I have this many days left, and you're going to heal me. I this, and he did. At the end of that, I was completely healed of that chronic pain condition. Yeah. So if you just add that's that awesome. step or that, that action step. I mean, that's so good because I go back to thinking, you know, I'm not sure who it was, but the guy that was like, okay, God, if, the, if this is you, I'm going to put this cloth on the ground, and you'll let this cloth stay dry, but everything moist around it. What was he doing? He was not testing God, but he was testing his faith in God. Right. Yeah. Like, I know you can do this, but to prove to me that this is your will, show me this. Yeah. And so, so I think sometimes God likes that, because like, he's like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show my my people that I'm for them. I'm not against them. You know, I'm, and this is just, a, I'm only using things out of my life for examples, but I can remember first starting to live for the Lord and, and I'm like, I worked at O'Reilly's and I think I probably told this before, but I worked at O'Reilly's auto parts and I picked parts and I hadn't lived for the Lord, but like probably like six weeks and they were giving away NASCAR tickets. And I'm like, Lord, if, if you're real, let, let them call my name. And I'm not kidding you, they called my name. And me and him went to NASCAR together, didn't we? And I'm like, but look, the look, I was like, what? Did the, he hurt me? Oh my gosh, it made my faith grow. Right, right. You know, like sometimes God's like, yeah, I want to show you I'm real. I can do stuff. And so that's so good. I think that's awesome. Like what you said, you know, have put these things out for God to show you. Okay, anybody else having some things that would help you grow in your faith? Well, they gave me some examples so we don't, we're not blank in air. <laughs> well, to help you grow in your faith or to increase in your faith, We need to hear God's word. We can't just have a relationship with God without having his word. What does John say? In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. Um, I might have misquoted that, but you know the scripture. You can read it. It's in John 1. 1. But what I'm saying, God is the word. I can't grow my, I couldn't have grown my faith by uh, putting out what she said, the things, without having someone tell me about that, you know. I would have never knew about the story of the rag on the ground if I never heard it preached or talked to me before. So you have to have the Word of God. The Word of God grows your knowledge. And then not only just read the Word of God, because we can get in this, like, like, trance, like, I have to read the Word of God today, because, you know, that's what Sister Sarah said. Okay. <laughs> but believe when we read it that it's real and that it can give us direction. Right. That it's for a reason. I think sometimes that's as Christians where we get in this like 
because I remember when coming into church, like, well, if I just read my word every day, my day will be better, and I'll feel better, and things will go better, and in the beginning, it does, it makes your life, especially for someone that's living in the world that's coming into the church, it does help, but then what happens when it just becomes a chore, and it's like, okay, well, we're all over this, and now I just have to read my word, but God but God wants us to come into his presence with joy. He wants us to be excited. So I think that when you're reading the word, be open to hear his voice. Be open. Don't just read it for a chore, but be like, Lord, where, where can I be included in this word when I'm reading it? Where can you show me what you're trying to show me in this word? Pray as you read it. And then what else? Like she said, we act on his word. So we read it, we've read his word, we've heard it, now we've trusted in it, now we act on it. So it's kind of like, you know, you can't, God, if you, God tells you to go, if God told Elijah to go up there and wait for rain and pray for rain and see the rain come in, but Elijah said, well, you told me. I just believe you're going to do it, and he just went on his way. It would have never came because he had to act upon it. So, I'm going to go on. Sorry, guys. Um, so, Dr. J. Oswald Sanders says, Faith enables the believing soul to treat the future as present and the invisible as an as seen. Faith, it, you're treating it as like it's already happening. And you know, I just like, because I like when I pray, sometimes I imagine God, because I like to see. You know, I'm more of a hands-on kind of learner, so even then, I kind of do that even with my relationship with God. I, I want to see things. I want to visualize it. I want to imagine it. And I think that's what it's referring to. It's like having faith to know. Even though you didn't see it, this is what's going on. See, Martin Luther King Jr. said, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Ooh, that's kind of scary. I think brother, um, what is um, pastor's son-in-law's name? Actually, yeah, he did. Like, I watched one of his services one time on Facebook when I was on Facebook. But it was the fall test. It was, like, the trust test, right? Yeah. And it's, like, he's, like, okay, guys, like, really? Like, hold your arms together. And he's, like, really? I have faith that you're not going to drop me. And, and you fall back into their arms and you trust that they're going to hold you and take care of you. And that's our relationship with God. We have faith that even when we are falling, he's going to catch us. Um, George Muller once said, faith does not operate in the realm of the possible. There is no glory for God in that which of humanly, humanly possible. Faith begins where man's power ends. So what is he saying? Faith does not operate in the realm of possible. If we think it's already, like... If we can build it, like, just like, okay, I like Oma. I'm going back to Oma. <laughs> Sorry. But they didn't have banks to go get loans. They didn't have way. So, like, nowadays, if we're broke and, like, oh, bills are coming tight, sucks. But sometimes you'd be like, I guess I'm going to get one of those high interest loans just to make the ends meet. But, but no, back, back then they have faith. Hey, I'm broke. I don't have no food, but God is going to provide. And many times in that old month would be like in the middle of a blizzard, winter, and there's no way to get any propane, any food. But God provided. He brought the food. He bought the propane. He brought everything. And I think that we've got to this point in this world right now that we've taken all the possibility of what God can do and we put it in our own hands. And see, God is not going to share his glory with nobody. Isn't that what it says? Like, I'm going to share my glory with no one. So, sometimes we need to get to the point where we're going to say, I don't want to do it my way no more. I want to put my faith in the Lord. I want to put my trust in the Lord. <clears throat> the faith of 
God. So here's the story. Um, one night, a house caught on fire, and a young boy was forced to flee to the roof. And the father stood on the ground below and outstretched arms, calling to his son, Jump, jump. The son said, There's so many flames, there's so many smoke, it's so dark, I can't see you. But the father replied, But I can see you, and that's all that matters. Amen. All that matters is that God sees you where you are, and he's with you. Yeah, and he's with you, and he's for you. <laughs> and do you think he didn't face everything in this world, too? I, that's what's even better, is he's already known is what you're going through. Mm -hmm. P Peter thought that he was seeing a vision or a dream when he realized what was happening. He said, now I know without a doubt. That's faith right there. That's, that's the definition of faith. I know without a doubt. Faith. You don't, you, we could go on and on, but and I'll even use the one more story in the Bible that talks about Elijah, or Elisha, sorry, where he just demonstrates his faith in the Old Testament. And it's in the... 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 14 through 18. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to kind of do a rough, rough through it. But him and his servant, they're going and they're going to march into a battle. And his servant's questioning, well, look at all the charity, charity, the chariot, the, yeah, the chariots, and all the soldiers and all this stuff. And, and Elisha prayed. God opened his eyes. Show him who is with us. And when his eyes were open, there was more on their side than that was on the other side. Sometimes we just need to pray, God, open our eyes. Yes. Show us. And he will. That's right. So, what am I saying? I'm saying, let our faith be bigger than our problem. Let us trust in the Lord and let us give all the glory to the Lord. I wonder if God sometimes gets disappointed in, his, in examples like, you know, going and getting the loan when you should trust in the Lord or going and, you know, when you're out of food, you just go and depend on other people, which is fine. But do we take the time? telling with me on that because I, I 
been asking for a lot, you know, and I won't go into details because it's not the timing yet, but when I was crying out and everything was going on, he was like, but didn't you ask for some, you know, ask for something? And I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. So sometimes when we ask, it's not going to go the way we think it's going to go. Right. It's going to go the way God wants it to go, and we have to have faith in that situation, even when it, we think, oh gosh, every, everything's going wrong. But it's for a reason. It's for a season. Mm -hmm. And you said you have a testimony? Yeah, uh, Faith Felder, um, Sister Denny and Sister Carrie had prayed for me at one weekend prayer meeting um, about that I wanted this other job at headquarters, and then Carrie threw in there. Well, God, if it can't be that job, send her something else. Well, God sent me something else. Mm -hmm. And um, they, I turned it down first, and they came back and said, give me a number. So I talked to my sister, talked to my husband, talked to the pastor, and they finally decided on what number, which I thought was unrealistic, and I sent it. And Rachel was one of the things she was saying, and my husband said, but pray for something specific so you know. So without a doubt, you know what, what God is. Right. And so my first thought was, well, I'm just going to pray that God's going to grant what I ask. But then I said and guessed myself, and I'm like, that's a little unrealistic. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so I was telling the ladies' conference, I was telling Rachel and uh, Kate this, that I think I'm going to bring it down to like a few thousand because that's more realistic. But if, I, if God gives me at least that, then I'll know it's God's will. Well, they came back with a phone call, and I got exactly what I asked for. No fighting, no... Wow. No back and forth, and it was Praise like, God, I felt like as soon as I got that phone call, I was jumping, and I was shouting, and I told my husband, I was like, he's the God of the unrealistic. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it was, because I, I had second-guessed it and thought, that's crazy to pray for that. But yeah. God reminded me once again, to build my faith, that he is the God of the unrealistic and the impossible. Amen. Amen. So Amen. put it out there, because if it's God's will, then that. Right. right, exactly. Yeah, and I mean, I think that uh, that's so good because God wants to show us that. He yeah. wants to show us that, he, you know, we pray for miracles, but we don't want them in the way that he wants to give them to us. Right? I mean, yeah. really, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, we want, Lord, send me this. Give me that. Do this. And Lord is, he's like, wait a minute. Don't you want me to do it in my way? Yeah. And see, God was telling me. That, like Elijah was saying, I hear the rains coming, and God was telling you, hey, this is what I want to give you. Yeah. You just have to have faith to believe that he's going to do it. Yeah. And, and we get in our flesh and we question our faith. Well, mm -hmm. maybe I should take it down a few thousand. Mm -hmm. When God was telling me the whole time, well, girl, this is for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he was showing you his promises. Yeah. Um, anybody else have anything? Testimony, anything? Yeah. It's not, not a testimony, but I, I was just during this whole lesson, I was thinking about a, a message that I heard before, and it's kind of a play on words. The scripture says, Now faith is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But the play on words was, Now faith. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people, we say we have faith, but it's always for something out there, mm -hmm. yeah. out of right. reach. In the future or something, mm -hmm. but it's saying now faith. Right. Yeah. Believing in now, having Amen. the conviction and the strength, the spiritual fortitude to say, I believe now. Right. That's good. Right. That's, That's good. good. That's Amen. really good. Really good. Yeah, because you know, we can believe like you're saying for future things, like, oh yeah, well I believe God, you can he can bring me a business in ten or fifteen years, but God God is saying now. So, anybody else? Well, I enjoyed teaching this tonight. I didn't think it was going to go good. And I was telling the Lord in my bedroom, I'm like, I'm so tired. I don't think I'm going to do good. So, you're going to have to do this. <laughs> so, and he provided. So, he did God, good. it's good. He did really good. And so, well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I just will end with. Uh, prayer and then I'll close. So.
Thank you, Lord Jesus, just for reminding us that we need to trust in you and believe in you and have faith in you that you can do all things, that all things are possible through with you, Lord God. And everything that we need, we bring it to you, God. And let us make a commitment and a covenant with you this week that we would put our trust in you, God. And remind us of your word to come to you in our times of need, God, so you can show us that you are for us and that you are with us and that you're not against us. I thank you, Lord, for your wonderful love and your wonderful word. In Jesus' name, amen. Since I've had this car, uh, I've had, fortunately, the insurance, but I've still had $1,000 out of pocket, but I've had about $9,000 worth of damage done to my car by there. Wow. <laughs> now, if it would have all been at once, it would have been the gap insurance because the car's not working it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, it's Ford also, so. Huh? Hey, so hey, hey, stop it. Hey, I'm a Chevy guy by trade, but... But uh, not by trade. But Four to cheap. You, you try you got. Oh no! Actually, I went out and I drove Equinox, Terrain. Stop. Uh, I drove. Uh, Equinox. No, don't ever buy one again. I, I drove uh, Trailblazer. I was looking for an, an SUV, but not a big, big, big one. Right. And I drove this bed. Man, this has got a lot of pickup. I mean, it's got a lot of gumption and gusto. Right. 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 And it had the it had the trailer hitch right. already in it. Yep. 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 Thinking about stories, maybe. Um, oh, 